Memphis Vinyl Gym. This is response to your thread. We got all our top tens here. I'm here with my friend Ryan. So I'm Dustin. Uh, I'm uh, Ryan's going to show yours first because he only has a few. I have a very small collection. My so, stack's like this. Yeah. So we're going to let Ryan go first, and I'll just try to throw as many in as I can. All right. Perfect so, tens. Perfect tens. This, this, I had about 15 minutes oh, to man. rush. Yeah, I I. I had about 15 minutes to rush. Dustin messaged me and was like, we're going to do a top 10 or our favorite 10. So I was like, ooh. So under pressure, I... My Not the Queen song. What? Yeah, no, under pressure. That's a great song. Um, so my first one is the Yardbirds. First of all, artwork. Awesome artwork. I love it. It's the band members in their bird masks, which I thought was so cool. And then there's the script and then looking over the, oh shit, over the town. So awesome artwork and on the back too. That's just freaking cool. Um, very bluesy album. I loved it. It, um, I, I think it might've been the first record I ever listened to ever like this. Cause I saw on the front, Jeff Beck, Eric Clapton and Jimmy Page and that, and that trio right there just blew it out of the park for me. It was super bluesy. Uh, you can definitely tell how they threw in, you know, Sonny Boy Williamson in there and Muddy Water. So it was, uh, they even made a song, Drinking Muddy Water. It has four sides on it, and I loved it. The guitar tones were perfect. Lyrics were awesome. I, I, I loved it. So, ten for me, definitely. Oh, that's my phone. Oh, my God. As soon as I heard this. Absolutely. Rush, Hemispheres. Um, freaking great. Neil Peart is an amazing songwriter. Uh, I love the artwork. Even though there's a naked dude on it, that's okay. That's okay for me. Um, and then it was just weird and psychedelic, and it uh, was very intriguing. Songs are beautiful on it. Uh, my favorite, yeah, La Via Strangiato. Definitely a 10 for me. It, um, it's like a story. It just goes like prelude apollo dionysus it, it just goes through and it's a uh, very very together and that was one of the criteria for me was um versatility yet don't make faces I'm just making, <laughs> there i i guarantee you there's someone that just hasn't taken their eyes off me this whole time i'm just trying to keep, <laughs> them, like, I'm just trying to keep them entertained <laughs> so versatility yet um togetherness and I think they achieved it. Beautiful songwriting, amazing drumming, and freaking awesome singing. Um, for those of you who saw that one video, oh, the final's not in here, but one huge 10 for me was, uh, I'm just going to block out Dustin here, was I Queen, do it. A Night at the Opera. This one was definitely a 10 for me. As, as, as soon as I heard Dustin say, okay, we're going to do 10s, this is the first album that popped into my mind. Because oh. this one truly has awesome versatility and yet um they don't lose the integrity of the album it, it they use different instruments they um use different singers uh, uh roger taylor sings one of them mercury sings most of them but uh brian may sings many of them so you have yeah, that does versatility. He sing, i'm in love with my car yeah yeah that, that that's uh, roger taylor that's roger taylor that's one of my favorite queen songs that's an awesome song and uh you're my best friend was that you was uh, actually written by the bassist John Deacon, which kind of surprised me. Um, the Prophet song, which you thought was maybe one of the first prog songs. Yeah, well, maybe I wouldn't say the first. Debatable. <laughs> it's definitely not one of the first prog songs. Yeah. I would say it's a Queen's prog. prog song. Queen's prog song, yeah. Um, Good Company uses a ukulele, so you, so you can see that. For, and then, of course, uh, Bohemian Rhapsody, which is kind of a microcosm of the album itself. Uses um, a lot of different instruments. And lots of different beats, but uh, brings it together full of awesome harmonies. Uh, easy ten for me. Wasn't a, a thought, not not a, not a question in my mind about that one. So I'm gonna do this one last. Uh, okay. And then of course, this one, Led Zeppelin three. And I I thought okay, I have I might need to pick a Led Zeppelin album, but I didn't want to do two or four because I I don't, I don't think they deserved it. Um, because there was something about the album that I thought ah uh, you know. Maybe it's not a 10, but I think I like acoustic Led Zeppelin more than I like hard rock Led Zeppelin. I think it's just a little bit more. I just I just like it when they uh, kind of tone it down and use acoustic guitars. Sitting on my wallet, not comfortable. Yeah, that kind of hurts. Um, 
Jimmy Page is a master of alternate tuning, so um, he makes it sound, sound very cool. So this was kind of their more acoustic album. And then, of course, the artwork. Well, you can actually change the artwork yourself. So yeah, yeah. you can I, make your own artwork. That's 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 pretty clutch. At two points throughout all the turns, you'll see each each member you'll yeah. will be seen twice in two different spots. So you kind of make your own artwork. So you know that's awesome for me. See, songs were amazing. I, I, I think they're all ugly, here. so I turn it so you can't see anybody. Yeah, yeah, Dustin is. Yeah. Not that I can talk. Kiss was pretty ugly once they took out their makeup. <sighs> Yeah, but one song that I actually hated was "Hats Off to Roy Harper," so that wouldn't have made it a ten for me. But then, as I, the more I listened to it, it was just, it was, I I, I started liking it the more the the more I heard it, and I, uh, and I ended up loving it by the end, and I wanted to learn it because it's uh it's he puts his voice through a tremolo, and it's just like a weird tone of the guitar, and it's just um. Uh, versatile and it sounds weird but it sounds i i love it and then of course that's the way in a uh, ron yower stomp and then of course there's this little side note that they uh recorded i think a couple of the songs in this little cottage in south S snowdonia it's just like a little vacation spot so it had like that awesome vibe and they recorded it in a cottage in um i can't remember where it, it might have been uh south snowdonia i don't even know that word where that is i used to know it's in Europe somewhere, but um, I thought that was super cool. Ryan has one more here, but his dad picked one. My dad I, did pick I, one. I want you to show that. I will show He it. didn't think it was a 10, but his dad picked one when he was coming over here, yeah. and I want him to show it in, anyway, because Third Opinion, it's only one album, but yeah. this is Ryan's dad. This is my dad's. What's your dad's name? My dad's name is Slade, and he's the one who gave me most of my records, including this one and 10 years after, and oh, damn it, I spoiled the show crap um it doesn't matter leonard skinner pronounced leonard skinner he liked it pronounced leonard skinner yeah pronounced leonard skinner uh i like that i thought they were actually trying to teach you how to uh pronounce it <laughs> maybe they were yeah. um i love the artwork on the back there's smokes just totally badass written in skull and crossbones amazing songs on here uh tuesday's gone give me three steps the first song i ever learned on guitar um they're southern rock they're not country he doesn't sing with like a, a country voice um, but it has that southern southern uh, twang to it which I thought was always very very cool and my dad gave this one a 10 has Freebird he loves every song on here so this is this is my dad's 10 the only reason I didn't give it a 10 was maybe the front artwork it was just the band so I was like okay maybe not the coolest artwork but the but the music freaking great so Hats off to you, Papa. And then, of course, as soon as I saw this one, I was like, this is definitely a 10. Shh, by 10 years after. These guys are fast and energetic. And um, my favorite song, the last song, I woke up this morning just like, oh, it just sounds so cool. And you just want to sing it. And the guitar tone is perfect. And then there's just a band on the back. So this one was definitely a 10 for me. Um, I love the artwork on the front and just his, the person's face in just two different positions. I thought it was just super cool and it says, shh, years after. like it's supposed to be whispered or something. Kind of a cool effect. That's my top ten, you guys. That's my, that's my humblest of ten, so All right, I'll now, hand, uh, hand it off to you there, Dustin. Now to start my stack, but I just realized we're not listening to music, so mm. for those guys that have been staring at me the whole time, Damn. I was picking out a record and, uh... Yeah, that's what you were doing. We're going to throw on Billy Idol, Whiplash, Smile. I'm going to hand that yeah, to Ryan and let him do that while I start. Save a little time. Ooh. Luckily, my account can have more than 15 minutes. For all of you that can't. Yeah. In my first video, bro. <laughs> oh, yeah, I posted my first video. Today. All right. And you can't I'm going to start. Minor. I just went through my collection, and I have a big stack, but I was hard on them. I, I didn't pick some. But they're in alphabetical, so. First one. Alice Cooper, welcome to my nightmare. <laughs> Pro as much as I love Operation Mind Crime, favorite concept album of all time, right here. Every song on here is just fantastic. There is not a single. Oh, God. I think I want to put this one on. <laughs> That's how good it is. Yeah, I'm going to say that to every single album on here. From the song Welcome to My Nightmare to Cold Ethel, which is 
one of the worst songs on there, but it's still one of my favorites. And the song Steven from start to finish is in the running for best song of all time. Ooh. So you guys can... Oh, God, that piano just... It's creepy. Steven! Oh, Look okay. up the story behind this album. There is a... Uh, I cannot spend that story. much time on each album, so mm -hmm. pardon me. Gotta Second move. album, one of the best albums of all the 80s. Slippery When Wet by Bon Jovi. An arena rock mega hit. I mean, from Let It Rock to You Give Love a Bad Name to Living on a Prayer to Wanted Dead or Alive. Love is a social disease. Go listen to Raise Your Hands. You've never heard that song before, and it could have been the single off this album if there hadn't been eight other singles. Go listen to this album if you, even if you don't like Bon Jovi. Go listen to that album. The next one. I haven't seen anybody show this so far. If you have, my bad, but shame on you if you haven't. <laughs> Boston's first album. What's wrong with you? I just found this out a couple... Actually, probably about a month and a half ago. You turn it upside down. The spaceships are guitars. What? <laughs> Dude, every song on here could have been a single. His hair is a 10. <laughs> this album. The Afro? Is amazing. <laughs> nice. Why has no one shown that? And if you have, I apologize. Next one. Uh, could just be because I love hair metal. Cinderella. Night Songs. Nothing for nothing! That's exactly how he sounds. <laughs> He's a horrible singer, but he makes it work. Oh, God. Nobody's Fool is a power ballad like you've never heard before. There's no other power ballads like that. I'm just going to be like this for all of them. I defend them. Just intense the it in your face, just like... <laughs> the next one is... Uh... Oh, I would have picked that one. The next one's David Lee Roth, but it's yeah. not the David Lee Roth album you think you're thinking. Skyscraper. I actually know that one. Billy Sheehan on bass. Steve Vai on guitar. I actually like this better than Eat 'em and Smile. I don't know what it is about this album, but it just sounds great. It it's better than Eat 'em and Smile. It's a more polished version. I feel it's what they're trying to do with Eat 'em and Smile. If they took it and polished it off and finished it, and that cover, look at that, on a mountain. Skyscraper, but he's just on a mountain. Just completely... I couldn't do that. <laughs> could you, could you do I that? Com make, put a thing in the comments. Could you Could you climb a mountain? <laughs> if not... If, it, if anybody <laughs> doesn't comment, I know you didn't really watch the video. <laughs> this next one I listened to earlier. Um, little story. My sister was sitting in my room and I was started a humming a landslide by Fleetwood Mac. And she goes... Why are you humming a Dixie Chick song? Oh. And I said, oh my god. Sweet god. Because I like that song. And I slowly grabbed this and threw it on the turntable. And she's like, what? Did they cover it? Did they cover Dixie Chicks? I was like, this is from 75. But what year did the Dixie Chicks write it? <laughs> god. Anyway. Yeah. The first Fleetwood Mac album. I think this is better than Rumors. Personally. This album kicks ass. It does. Kicks ass. I'm not even going to talk about it because you know. Yeah. You're right there nodding. Like, yeah, that kicks yeah. ass. <laughs> Little, I surprised myself. But, comedy album. Flip Wilson, Cowboys and Colored People. With the one-way sign upside down, I thought that was just a hilarious joke within itself. <laughs> it's a one-way sign, but it's upside down pointing the other way. <laughs> Dustin, Jesus. <laughs> this, uh, Ryan's a big George Carlin fan, and so am I. I am. I but am I think indeed. this album was better than anything George Carlin put out on vinyl. So before, Albeit, I don't have everything, but from what I've seen. And this was 1967. An African-American comedian, 1967, doing some of the jokes I heard on this. I wish I could go see this guy live today, and I would. I'd pay $100 to go see this guy. I'd hope it would be a long show, but I'd pay the hundred dollars. Yeah, he's one of my favorite comedians, and I've heard three or four, three or four of his albums. So before I judge, I'm gonna listen to it, and then I'm gonna yeah, it'll, it'll be, be on the, the turntable so, right after this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Idol. Billy Idol. You would? I, I, how much Billy Idol have you heard? 
Not You very wouldn't much. think it's this effect heavy or this bass or no. synth heavy, would you? No. Billy Idol blowing people's minds since the 80s. And cutting the tops off of Bam Margera's purple Lamborghini. Didn't know that. Didn't know that. No, I bet you did not. You learned something new about Billy Idol every day. You did? Well. Bam Margera paid him a lot of money to cut the top day. off of his uh The next one was Lambo. the first album I picked for this. Guns N' Roses, Appetite for Destruction. I feel bad that it's not the original cover, but it's the record. this cover yeah. is a perfect 10. The other cover is a perfect 10. So, I mean, okay. I used to be one of the guys where there were four or five songs on this cover, or on this album, that I really liked, and the other ones were just, I'd skip them. The more I listen to it, I mean, my new favorite song is one of the ones I wouldn't even listen to before, Think About You. The clean guitar, the clean acoustic on the chorus, alongside the distorted guitar. Sweet Child of Mine is one of the worst songs on this album now. <laughs> Mr. Brownstone, yeah, my second favorite song ask, on this yeah. album. It's another one I used to skip. Paradise City. Okay. That, oh my God. That might be there. Uh... It's so easy. Night. Not night train. <laughs> it's just the webcam. I sound way better in person. Yeah, he me. does. It, that that was but, just. Vocal I sound just, right there. I'm just sorry. like Axel. <laughs> but here on the inner sleeve, here's the original cover, just so you guys can see. How cool is that? Appetite for Destruction was the original title as well. But there's a little alien guy and a robot mugging this woman with toys on the ground. But yeah, perfect ten both covers. Guns Rose Appetite for Destruction. This next one, he was signed to Shrapnel in the late '80s, which was where they had all the. Shredder Guitars. Their motto is Guitar is King. This is an instrumental neoclassical jazz fusion album by a young guitarist named Greg Howe. He had a oh, harder that. group in the late or uh, early 90s called How To. <laughs> yeah, I get it. Yeah. But um, I'm not even going to name songs because there's, no, there's songs, but this whole album is one song in my opinion. This album just... I'm not even going to talk about it. Go get it. You'll know. I'm not even going to talk about it. It's really good. Kind of pique your curiosity. Now you want to get it, don't you? Um, yeah. This next one, I don't know who's really heard of them. I've seen Greeno show them. I've showed them a little bit before. But one of the most underrated 80s bands. Every song by these guys was catchy. Icon. Night of the Crime. This album is perfect from start to finish. Um... You might know them from the song Danger Calling. It might, You might have been played on the radio. But, I mean, uh, Shot at My Heart is my favorite song on this album. Really twangy, clean guitar, and then it goes into some 80s hair metal you wouldn't think would come from that intro. Icon, Shot at My Heart. Go check it out. If you're a fan of 80s metal at all, you'll like it. This next one, I was also... It was with the second one I considered, and I was also thinking, should I even put it there? It... Do I really like it as much as I think I like it? Or is it just because it's this album that it was on there? And uh, I picked it. Michael Jackson Thriller. I'm a big fan of Little Mikey. Yeah. And slightly less Little Mikey, but... I mean, from start to finish, this album, you can't pick a bad song. Def Leppard wrote their album Hysteria thinking of just this album, saying every song on that album was a single. That's how we're going to write Hysteria. We're not going to stop until it's done. And they did it. They did it. <laughs> it was a goddamn entertainer. You know this yeah. album, so I don't even have to talk yeah, about it. Yeah, but exactly. I mean, even the cover, look at him. Look at him. That He's laying sexy. down in a white suit, is... staring at a woman like, yeah. oh yeah. You want this. You know. <laughs> you know. See the look in my eyes right now? That's those are his eyes. Yeah. I'm gonna try to hold these eyes the rest of the Yeah. It's gonna be hard, dude. You're gonna get tired uh, of squinting pretty quickly. This next album. Keep it out your audience. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, this next album was the only Kiss album I picked, surprisingly. Love Guns. It's always been my favorite. Little side like treat. See right there? That one woman never got finished. The artist wasn't done and they said, hey, we need it now. So he, there's a floating head right there. <laughs> oh. But um, this is what Kiss is about. Standing in their costumes in front of all these sexy women. Like they rule the world. 
In the back, it's got this creepy dungeon feel. My favorite song on here has always been a... Oh, it's out of order in the album I was looking for, but I Stole Your Love. That guitar intro. Just... <coughs> Every song, damn it. This is the first album Ace sang on. Sang Shock Me, and that's one of the most legendary songs for Kiss Now. Ooh. This is my, in my... Forget Destroyer. In my opinion, this is the definitive Kiss album. And to each his own, but you're wrong. <laughs> nah, just... Yeah. Um, another guy off Shrapnel. This one was a little heavier. Greg Howe was a lot cleaner. This guy was more metal. But Tony McAlpine on his second album, Maximum Security. This artwork, I always love the two different Freaking types. Cool. The two different types of like print and art. You got the comic book looking guy here with the double lock doors. The album's name is Maximum Security. Over here. And again, these kind of albums, you can't really pick best songs. It's all just one album. You can't even... I believe he had Billy, Greg Howe had Billy Sheehan and Mr. Big on bass, and I believe he did too. They all, I they think all so. Borrowed Billy I know Sheehan. George Lynch of Dokken played on a lot of here and had a lot of solos. But again, another great Shred album, instrumental. Um, if you want to check out something by him and you're not too big a fan of instrumentals, check out a band he had called Mars. It was with um, McAlpine, Tommy Aldridge, Someone Rock. And uh, Rudy Sarzo. And it was a great 80s hair metal project. Mars. And the album I want you to check out is called Project Driver. Uh, if, just if you're not... I know some people don't like instrumentals too you bad. Guys you guys got some iTunes vocals. homework to do, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not even halfway through. Yeah. He's got to so, stack your kids. Pause the video here. I'm at 21 minutes. I'm going to try to get done by 30. But Go take a bathroom break. Yeah. Go do right. a drink of water. Pause the video right now. All right, and we're back. Yep. <laughs> Motley Crue, Shout Out the Devil. Not the original cover. I'll get out and show you guys. On the inside, it has what the original cover was. This is, unfortunately, a reissue, I think. Not positive. I can't find the year on it. But, um... This song... My favorite song on this album is Too Young to Fall in Love. It's not what people would think. But this is basically a representation of what the original cover was. Look at Mick Mars. You do not fuck with that guy. <laughs> That guy will kill you. He's a great guy. Well, maybe Start not. Start to finish. Shout. Bones glass or something. Yeah. No, there's. He's no, got a disease like, yeah. now. But, yeah, that disease. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, shout at the devil. Looks the kill. Bastard. Knock him dead, kid. Knock him dead, kid. Knock him dead. Oh, I love Again, that. it's just the webcam is why I don't sound perfect. And then too young to fall in love. They even do the Beatles cover or uh, cover of the Beatles Helter Skelter on here. Ooh, that's freaking cool. Get it. <laughs> this next one's a live album. I wonder how many people have live albums. Probably a couple. Queen Live Killers. Look at that picture on the front. They ruled the world. This this is one of the most perfectly played shows I've ever heard on vinyl. The the version of We Will Rock You We Will Rock You that they do isn't the one you'll think of. They do the traditional and then they go into an even more rock and roll version of it. Yeah. And it's better. Yeah. I mean you, you hear these songs, and then someone tells you there's a better version the same band did of yeah. their own song. It's the only way you'd believe that a different version of the original was better. They change up a lot of stuff. As if the same band did it. Yeah. It, Death on Two Legs. Ugh. May changes up his solos. If you don't have this album, you need to go get it. This is a definitive part of every collection. First Queen album I ever bought. Not the live one. That one. Oh, God. <sighs> Alright, this next one's the whole reason I was going to make this video is for this next album. Before you say anything, I'm right. <laughs> this next album is the greatest heavy metal album ever made. So start writing hate mail. Wait. Wait for it. Wait, wait, wait. Just, you don't, don't even, I don't even want to hear your comments if you think different. If you want to agree with me, Racer X. Nah, oh, okay. Second Actually, never mind. <laughs> I always like... I mean, you see the triple X, triple X, X, X. Second Heat. Uh, this cover. I'm Look at it on the back. That is what... These guys never got any promotion. Mm. And they played fast. And most of the times people said, Oh, they played fast because they want, they want all this publicity and everything. And they're getting all their... They didn't have publicity. They were fast to be fast. 
but they were fast and melodic and didn't just hit a thousand notes. From my, I mean, Paul Gilbert was in this yeah, band. Yeah, I'm sorry. So can't argue Bruce Boyer him. was one of his students, and he said, hey, you want to start the greatest heavy metal band of all time? <laughs> sure. <laughs> sure. Bruce Boyer, if he wouldn't have just started, he's. I think he does like show music now or something like that. But, I mean, John Alder, Scott Travis was in Judas Priest for a little bit, and then Jeff Martin. This album. Go listen to the song Heart of a Lion. Go listen to Sunlit Nights. Hammer Away. From start to finish, this this is a 15 out of 12. Damn. Just go listen to this album from start to finish. I've posted about it a thousand times on Facebook, on here. Go listen to this album from start to finish. If you can find it on vinyl, it's worth the $10 it'll cost you. Go get it. I mean, it's I got I got it for Gilbert. four, but it'll cost you ten. <laughs> the guy didn't know what he had. But anyway, yep. go get this album. I, you will not regret it for a second. I promise. That if if you have to pick one out of here and you say, "Oh, you hit a lot of perfect tens," that is my perfect ten. You have these one. are perfect tens too. You have a good one. That is my that is my fifteen. These are that's these are tens. That's how good it is. Rat out of the cellar, one of the definitive eighties albums. You're in love. Uh, I'm insane. Oh, bro, you're almost out of battery. You gotta plug for that. Round and round. This is a maze over there somewhere. This album is great. And the follow up, uh, uh, the follow up, uh, le what, why am I not? Oh, Invasion of Your Privacy. Sorry, I want to say Lay It Down. That's the hit off there. But, um, the follow up almost made it on here too, but I didn't want to pick two rats. Um, sorry, let me check my battery. Really, really low. It says I got 29 minutes, but we'll hurry. Okay. Riot, fire down under. We're at 27. These already. guys got kicked off Capitol because they were too heavy. This album's in 1981. This sounds like mid-80s stuff. These guys were fantastic. Way ahead of their time. Rest in peace, Mark Real. That's all I have to say about that. If you like 80s metal and you like Riot, or you'll like Riot. If you like Quiet Riot, these guys were the original Riot in their name band. <laughs> They're called Riot. I'm um, gonna speed up here a little bit. Satriani, Surfing in the Alien, instrumental guitar rock. This is a little funkier than anything Tony McAlpine or Greg Howe did. Um, drum programming with a good guitarist, great bassist, and awesome artwork. I mean, look at that, a Silver Surfer. Yeah. This is a ten artwork if I've ever seen it. Like a comic book. Love it. One of the best covers in history. Scorpions Blackout. The Forks in the Eyes. The songs on here are awesome. Blackout. Da -da 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 -da. Blackout. No one like you. Oh. Dude. How do people not know about this album? Metalheads out there, they're like, hey, you ever heard of Linkin Park? No. Have you ever heard of the Scorpions? <laughs> you see my eyes? See what I did there? No. That's how I feel. This next one I can't recommend enough. This might, this band uh... needs your, go buy their album, support them. They're new. I mean, they've been around for 10 years, but they're new. They need your support. Steel Panther. Oh my God. Balls out. This is their second album. Their first album, Feel Steel, I still need to get. I can't find a copy. Hopefully they put another few on eBay, and I'll get it. Mm -hmm. But Satchel, he played with Paul Gilbert in the 80s in a band called The Electric Fence. Uh, Everything about dude, them. <laughs> Ralph Sines, who his stage name is Michael Starr, was a singer for LA Guns for a little bit. These guys are everything about 80s metal around today. Go get their albums. Again, you will not regret it. Only a few more. Um, Sticks, The Grand Illusion. You guys know. Yeah. Oh, God, I can't. I, I need to go pick more. I might have to make a second video. Yeah, you might want to do this in two I'm parts. fooling myself. <laughs> Sticks reference. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Um, oh, you 2 The Joshua Tree. Yeah. Huge. This is their only album, in my opinion. Yeah. Except for War. That's their other only album. <laughs> they have two only. I was going to pick ah. Van Halen and I immediately grabbed Van Halen 1 and I was like, no, wait a minute. I thought I was going to grab. That's a 9. I need a 10. 
Van Halen, 1984. There's a baby angel smoking a cigarette. Yeah. With such hits as Jump, Panama. And fucking Hot for Teacher. <sighs> this I, is the best Van Halen album. It's on the Sammy Hagar, I'm sorry, it's never, ever, ever topped. No, no. David Lee Roth hasn't even topped that. Sammy Hagar oh. is a great singer. Yeah. I love his Van Halen stuff. I probably like most of his other stuff, most of them, a bunch of Dave's other stuff. But that album comes out on top. I have respect for Dave's for Sammy Hagar. Yeah. And I'm not saying anything bad about him. I, nope. I'm just saying that album's better. He's a great guy, but damn This it. next one, I think, is my favorite 80s album of all time besides Racer X. And I'm talking just straight hair metal here. White Lion. Pride. These guys didn't have a huge budget. But they got pretty big in the 80s with their hits When the Children Cry and Wait, both off this album. Uh, fun fact, the guitarist Vito Brada doesn't make music anymore. He lives at home with his parents by his own choice and doesn't get involved with music anymore. He's just done with the industry. He doesn't like it anymore. He doesn't like the way it is. And, you know, I can respect that. I can see what happened with it. Yeah. As a musician, I don't like where the industry is. But I'm not one of those guys where I'm not going to say there's no good music anymore. It's there. It's always been there. You just got to go look for it. It's just not mainstream anymore. You got to go find it. You go dig it up. I'm tired of people crying about the music industry saying there's no good music anymore. Go look for it. When You you say, oh, there's no good heavy metal bands anymore. When's the last time you went to the local show and supported one of your local heavy metal, ba local heavy metal bands to check them out? You, you don't like modern rap? You don't like where pop's going? When's the last time you checked out a local performer? It's They're there. You just got to go find them. Frank Zappa, apostrophe. He has his own style. Just Nanook rubs it. The guy slaps a baby penguin <laughs> and makes the boy just about as mad as a baby Eskimo boy could be. I like that boy. Don't eat the yellow snow. <sighs> and my favorite title, uh, San Alfonso's good. Pancake Breakfast. Just leave, we're almost done. And the last album I got was another Borderline album. And it was only because... I've heard it several times. I really like it. But I don't trust myself to call it a 10. But I'm going to call it a 10 because I feel it's a 10. Um, ZZ Top Eliminator. That awesome classic car in the front. With Give Me All Your Lovin', Legs, Got Me Under Pressure, Sharp Dressed Man, I Got The Six, Ooh. Bad Girl. This album is a southern rock masterpiece and i could pick so many more but i just don't own them on vinyl yet i, I try like ryan pointed out i try not to buy stuff unless it's an out yeah i'm at the point where i don't have too much money i don't have i can't go out and buy a 300 dollars collection i go out and if it's not an album i know that i'm in love and want right now or it's a band i've never heard of and i want to check out that's all I can get right now. I can't go out and say, hey, I kind of like this. Let me grab it. Yeah. All my stuff, I consider 8s, 9s, or 10s. But that's all I can get right now. We try to try stuff if it's cheap, but we don't have that much disposable income. You know, it's, College. Uh, it's hard. It's rough. It's, all right. Uh, my battery's about to die. I want to save this. Yeah. So, Dustin. Ryan. Signing off. All right. Should probably press the stop okay. button. I'm trying to do this without... Let's just uh, press the stop okay, button. Okay, you got it. Yeah. Yeah. Bye. Bye.